what does the word rate of change means? So you basically capturing the rate that a certain property is changing over time. That certain property could be a mathematical property, could be a physical property, or in a more simpler form, you are talking, let's say, about a motion or a movement that's happening a long time and you are describing how does that thing or does that person is changing over time you can express that motion or that change through a rate usually when we say rate we say one unit per other unit one unit represented as a part of other units as simple as possible you can think about your car What's the rate of change of the car motion? In this case, we're talking about speed. So it could be miles per hour or could be kilometers per hour to represent how fast the car is moving in respect to time. So sometimes you throw a ball. How fast does the ball go down to, to the ground? Then that's a rate of change problem. If you are rolling a wheel, on the road then how fast is that wheel moving with respect to time in this case so let's learn together what's the rate of change and what are the mathematical concepts behind it and how we are gonna solve some rate of change problems and be ready and be prepared to use those as moving forward in differentiation and integration so back into our slides what is the average rate of change if you look at the graph down here so let's say it is a company called rags that's producing formal suits now during one morning the psychology employees of that industry found the curves as we see here for the production of the factory workers so you can see here on the x-axis in this case we're calling it t as a unit of time we are giving it four slots one two three four so you start with zero that's 8 a.m the start of the day of the working day for those workers in that exact company one represents 9 a.m two three four until 12 p.m on the y-axis here we call it n that's the total number of suits produced so how many suits are being produced over time in more simple forms for that example how many suits are being produced per working day from those employee workers now you can see the curve is going based on the behavior of how many suits being produced per time so you can imagine that from 8 a.m to 9 a.m you are producing uh, at exact or certain moment you are producing two suits three suits five suits all the way to 20 so you can see here this is a point where you have x and y x represents the time 1 in this case which means 9 a.m and 20 means how many suits are being produced on the y-axis in this case and you keep going at time slot 2 which is 10 a.m we produced 55 suits number two as we said it's kind of code we put for each time slot like we have 8 a.m 9 a.m 10 a.m 11 a.m. because if we put here 11 that doesn't make sense because 11 doesn't represent a point of 11 on the x-axis so just for simplicity we had it coded 1 2 3 4 but the y-axis represent exactly how many suits are being produced at that exact time or that exact period let's move to an example for that exact graph what was the number of suits produced by that company from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. so we have here the graph representing from 9 a.m. right here to 10 a.m. we can see at 9 we have 20 suits produced but at 10 we have 55 suits produced now how to tell how many suits produced between the 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. or between the code 1 and code 2 on the x-axis what you're gonna do makes sense to subtract the total number of suits we had at 10 a.m. minus the number of suits we had at 9 a.m. so 55 minus 20 give you 35 suits and it's good to note that 35 is the slope of the line from P and Q so at 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. if you draw a straight line 
and you find the slope of that straight line and you calculate that slope it will give you 35 so the number of suits produced between 9 a.m and 10 a.m can be found by calculating the slope between those two points so that's a good note to have on the side let's get another question on the same example what was the average number of suits produced per hour from 9 a.m to 11 a.m at 9 a.m we have 20 suits at 11 a.m here we have 64 suits you see your span is as big as this right now you're jumping from here to here so how many suits are being produced from 11 from 9 a.m to 11 a.m you have 64 suits produced at 11 you have 20 suits at 9 so 64 suits minus 20 suits that's 44 suits produced between those two but he's asking you per hour what was if he asked you like the first question how many total number of suits produced between 9 and 11 you can say 44 suits as easy as that well if he tell you per hour then you can say okay i know how many suits produced between 9 and 11 but how many hours did we spend between 9 and 11 that's 11 a.m minus 9 a.m that's in this case two hours so 44 suits divided by two hours that give you 20 20 suits per hour so that's the average rate of suits production per hour between those two hours that's what we call the average rate of change the change here is suit production and the rate is how many suits being produced per hour so that's the rate of change the number of suits produced are changing as time moving forward but if you want to get the rate of change how many suits are produced per hour then you can say here 20, 22 suits per hour and again if you get the slope between if you get a straight line between the point at 11 a.m and the point at 9 a.m and you get the slope for that straight line that will give you the number or the average rate of change or the number of suits produced per hour so if we have a definition for the rate of change the rate of change of y with respect to x whatever y is representing any value you're talking about and whatever x is representing any value any physical or real life value you're talking about so as x changes from x1 to x2 so from value 1 to value 2 in our previous example from 9 a.m to 10 a.m or to 11 a.m is the ratio of change in output to the change in input so the rate the average rate of change of any two entities on the y and x axis representation is x2 uh, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 with a condition x2 should not equal x1 y we don't have it to be zero then you divide a value over zero being undefined or approaching to infinity so let's look at a graph that represents two points we have a point x1 on the x-axis and point x2 and we have a point here in the xy axis cartesian so y1 represents f of x1 and y2 represents f of x2 now if we want to find the slope for the second line that's the straight line we draw between point p and point q then you can easily do that by applying y2 which is here minus y1 which is here so you 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 subtracted the y point at q minus the y value at point p over x2 which is here minus x1 makes sense right so you can represent y2 as f of x2 minus f of x1 same exact thing y equal f of x now let's take an example for an average rate of change if you have y equal f of x as x squared so the y equal x squared what is the average rate of change as x changes from 1 to 3 so you know the y equals x squared but x1 equal 1 and x2 equal 3 because x is changing from 1 to 3 so x1 either equal 1 or equal 3 but y1 and y2 in this case is the f of x1 and f of x2 so when x1 equal 1 y1 equal f of x1 f of x1 in this case is f of 1 if you plug in f of 1 into the x squared that gives you 1 squared which equals 1 
and when x2 equals 3, y2, which is f of x2, equals f of 3. If you plug in f of 3 in the, up in the function here, that's 3 squared equals 9. Now, the average rate of change equation, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, equals f of x2 minus f of x1 over x2 minus x1. f of x2, you already know it, 9, minus f of x1, you already know it, 1, over x2 is 3, x1 is 1, and that gives you 4. If you want to see that in a graphical representation, x squared is drawn in the purple curve, then x1 is represented here, and x2 represented here, and that represents the y equal x squared. Now, the average rate of change equals 4. That's the dotted straight line between the final point and the initial point. Now, if you want to find the rate of change, which is represented down here in this equation, as x moves from 1 to 2 instead of 1 to 3. So, x1 equal 1, x2 equal 2. And as x equal x1 equal 2, x2 equal 3. Let's see how we're going to solve that. So for b, x1 equal 1, y of 1 equal 1. x2 equal 2, y of 2 equal 4. The average is 4 minus 1, 4 minus 1 over 2 minus 1. That gives you 3. When x changing from 2 to 3, that can be easily found by y1 equal 4, y2 equal 9, x2 equal 3, x1 equal 2. That's 9 minus 4 over 3 minus 2 give you 5. Hopefully that's clear enough. I hope I'm not moving fast, but I think it's obvious and easy. The moment you know the equation of the rate of change and you know that y1 could equal the f of x1 and y2 f of x2 and f of x1 and f of x2 not necessary to be uh, represented differently in a different function. You can use the same function by knowing the value of x1, you can plug it in into f of x1, that will give you y1, and same thing for y2.